اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ایوری بڈی ٹو ٹوڈیز کلاس ہوپ یو ار آل ویل بائی دا گریس اف اللہ ایم پلیز جسٹ میک شیور ایوری ون دیٹ یو ہیو یور ایم کریکٹ آئی ڈیز اینڈ دیٹ یور ویڈیوز آر سوئچڈ آف ویڈیوز مسٹ بی آف ایف یو ڈو ناٹ ہیو دا کریکٹ آئی ڈی یو می فائنڈ یور سیلف ان دا ویٹنگ روم ای ہوپ دیٹ ایوری بڈی از ان ودو اینڈ دے ہیو دیئر ہیڈز اپروپریٹلی کورڈ Let me quickly read through our contents page and then we will start today's lesson. So the class or the rule that we will be doing today is a new rule. It's rules of waqf, rules of waqf part one. We will be starting a new rule today, something completely new from what we have previously covered. Okay, so before we start today's class, we're going to start with our opening prayer. If we can have a student on the mic, please. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum as Our first student is G1016. Aslam Nakam. Wa alaikum aslam. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, alhamdulillah. Jazakum Allah for asking. So we're going to start with our opening prayer. Okay, so we're going to start with Dawood and Tasmiya and then the prayer of the day. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan irrajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما and the translation oh my lord increase me in knowledge جزاكم الله thank you so much for your help الله حافظ okay so Like I said today, we are starting a completely new lesson, something we have not covered before. And the lesson is the rules of waqf. Waqf. Okay, so let me just read this for you here, and then we will go on to explain exactly what we are meaning. So it says here, waqf means to stop or pause. During the recitation, pausing at the end of a meaningful sentence or a verse with a break of breath is called waqf the correct way of pausing at various type various types of quranic words is explained below and this is what we will be going over today so let me just put this into context for you when you are reciting the quran sometimes you need to make a stop okay now sometimes this stop is because you have a stop sign okay Sometimes this stop is because you need to take a breath. You need to take a break in your recitation. Okay? Now, this in front of us here is Surah Al-Fatiha. Now, a lot of you may know this by heart. Some of you may not, but it doesn't matter, but I'm just trying to point out what I mean when I say waqf. Okay? So, if we just look at this first verse here. Oh, excuse my line. This is not very neat. I'm sorry. Okay. this first line here now all of us when we uh, start our recitation of the quran before we start our lesson we say tawuz a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim and then we say tasmiya tasmiya is here bismillahir rahmanir rahim okay now what you may have noticed if you're looking very carefully is this here these last three letters ha ya and a meme you actually would pronounce he me okay because we haven't learned waqf yet so normally if you were just reading this you would pronounce this this is the full word arrahimi but because there is an end of verse here because we are going to take a breath we have to combine this last letter and there are different ways that we combine which is what we will go over today okay and we have to make an appropriate stop an appropriate pause okay sometimes in the middle of a sentence in the middle of a verse you need to take a breath again you will need to make an appropriate stop an appropriate pause i'm just going to read the re- next line for you again okay so just listen very carefully i will first read it without waqf and then i will read it with waqf okay auz billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi 
رب العالمين. So you could hear that I was saying the noon there. Okay. Now, when we're reciting Surah Fatiha, which a lot of you would be reciting, if you know your namaz, you will be reciting in your namaz. The way that we usually hear this verse is, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Okay? So that's just putting into context so you can see what I'm saying, that we need to stop or end words in a particular way in order to make a pause. Okay? So now we are going to be learning how or how to stop each individual word because the last stroke on the end of a word makes a difference to how you are going to stop. Okay, so if I can have a student on the mic and we will work through these um, examples, I want everybody to pay attention because there's lots of different rules here, but some of the rules, um, they are similar to each other. Okay, and we'll go over which ones are similar, and some of them will be completely different, and we need to take particular and pay particular attention to those different types of rules as well. Okay, so if we could have another student on the mic, please. Yes, G1017. G1017. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah for asking. So, we are going to look at rules number one, number two, and number three together, okay? If you have a word in continuation, if you're reciting the Quran and you have this word, dhalika, it ends with a fatha here. Can you see that? Yep, you can see the fatha there? Yeah. Yes, excellent. Now, if you need to make a pause after that word, if there's a stop or you need to take a breath, you will change the fata into a skun, like here. Okay? So, in continuation, if you're reciting, you will say, dhalika. But if you need to make a stop, you will say, dhalik. Okay? So, can you recite this first word behind me? Dhalika. Dhalika. Zalik. Zalik. Good. So what have we done to the fatha? We have changed it into a? Sakun. Sakun. Well done. Excellent. Next one. Now, here we have a kasra on the last letter. Okay. The kasra, again, we will change into a sukun. So in continuation, we will say yomi. Yomi. And in vakf, if we have to make a pause after this word, we will say yom. Yom. Good, excellent. Third one. Here we have a dhamma as the last stroke on the last letter. Okay? If we have a dhamma, again, we change it into a sukun. Okay, so in continuation, it would be na'budu. 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 Good. So the ayn sound you have to make from your throat. Okay, so you have to join the noon to the ayn. Na. Na. Na'budu. Na'budu. Good effort. Well done. And when we are doing a vakf here, we will say na'budu. Na'abud. Na'abud. Right. So, again, you have just put the sukun on the end there. So, for everybody at home as well, as you can see, if you have a simple letter with a simple fatha, kasra, or dhamma, okay, simple fatha, kasra, dhamma, you will change each of those into a sukun if you are making a stop. Okay, if you are making a stop, you change them into sukun. Excellent. Jazakumullah. Thank you so much for your help, G1017. Allah Hafiz. Okay, if we can have our next student, please. Yes, our next student is G1056. G1056. Assalamu alaikum. 
G1056, can you hear me? Um, no response? Maybe we can move to another student then. Okay. Um, G1092. G1092. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you today? Speak dark and you. I'm very well, alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah for asking. So, are you understanding what we're doing? We're learning new rules about how to stop. You understand? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Good. So, sorry. We start with Dawood and Tasmiya and then we'll, follow, we'll go through the next two rules together. Okay? Okay. Beautiful. Well done. Jazakumullah. Okay. So, next rule here. On the end of the word, we have a tanreen of kasra. Okay, tanveen of kasra. Now, if you have a tanveen on kasra on the end of a word, on the end of a letter, sorry, you will change it to a sukun. A sukun. So we're going to pronounce this first word first. Okay. Makhtumin. 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 Very nice, good. Now we are going to do it in vak. Once more, Mahtu. Mahtu. Good. If to elongate it slightly, okay? Mahtu. Mahtu. Okay? So, okay. if you have Tanveen of, um, Tanveen of Kasra, you change it into Sukun. Next one, rule number five. If you have a Tanveen of Dhamma, again, you change it into a Sukun. Okay, again, you change it into a Sukun, right? Okay. So we're going to say it in separate, in continuation, and then we're going to say it in bulk. So here, you would have Quranun. Quranun. Okay, um, what I want you to do is just say these oh, first two mean? letters. First two letters for me. Kur. 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 Then now the next letter. A. A. Kur. A. Kur. A. Kur. A. Nun. Kur. A. Nun. Good, much better. What you need to be careful with is that you're not saying kura. It's not kura, it's kur and then a is separate. Okay, so you need to make sure each sound is very, very clear. Okay, well done, excellent. Now, if we're doing a vak, if we're making a stop after reciting this word, we will say kur an. Kur an. Kur an. Kur an. Good. Once more. Quran. Quran. Good. Well done. Excellent. So again, you would have noticed that the Tanveen of Kasra and Tanveen of Dhamma, both of those change into a Sukun. Okay. Both of those change okay. into a Sukun. Right. Excellent. Jazakumullah. Thank you so much for your help. Jazakumullah. Okay. Can you have our next student, please? Um, yes, G1056. Can you hear us? Still no response? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. Try something else. G1, G1125. G1125. Assalamu alaikum. G1125, can you hear me? Um. G1099. G1099. Walaikum assalam. Is that G1099? G1125. Okay, G1125. Okay, that's fine. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Good. Alhamdulillah. Excellent. So, if we start with the wuz and tasmiya, and then we'll go over the next two rules. Uzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmanir rahim Jazakumullah. Okay, so here again we have now a vertical kasra, a vertical kasra. Okay. Vertical kasra. 
Okay, what happens to a vertical cluster? It turns into a sukun if we are doing a vakf, right? So we're going to read it in continuation and then in vakf. So this will be rasulihi. Rasulihi. Beautiful. Once more. Rasulihi. Rasulihi. Very nice. Excellent. Now, if we're doing a vagf after this word and we need it to end here, we would say Rasuli. Rasuli. Good. Very good. You have to hear the ha at the end. So that was really, really good. Well done. Once more. Rasuli. Rasuli. Very good. Excellent. Well done. So next one, we now have an inverted dhamma. Okay, again, an inverted dhamma will change into a sukun if you are doing a vakf at that word. Okay, so this would be pronounced yarahu. Yarahu. Once more, yarahu. Yarahu. Very nice. And now we're going to do it in vakf. Yarah. Yarah. Good. Once more, yarah. Yara. Very nice. Excellent. Jazakumullah G1125. Really, really nice recitation. Well done. Allah Hafiz. Excellent. Now, I'm sure you've all noticed that at the moment, um, from rules one all the way down to rule seven, we have the same way of doing vakf. So, from one all the way down to seven, that means if you have a fatha, a simple fatha, a simple kasra, simple dhamma, tanreen of kasra, tanreen of dhamma, a vertical kasra or an inverted dhamma. In all of these cases, you are simply putting a sukun on the last letter in order to do vakf. Okay, in all of these cases, you are putting a sukun on the letter to do vakf from rules one to seven. Okay, now the next rule is slightly different. So let's go on to that one now. So we're now on to rule number eight. Okay, rule number eight. So if we could have another student, please, rule number eight. G1112. G1112. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. Jazakumullah for asking. So we've got a new rule here. If you start with Dawood and Tasmiya, then we'll work through this rule here. A'udhu billahi mina shaitan rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Okay. Now, this letter here, and we've done this before, but this is a reminder, is called Ta al Marbuta. Okay. Now, this is a Ta but it is the two dots on top of aha that makes it into a ta, ta al marbuta. Okay, now when we do a vakf here, it is not the same as if you were putting uh, just a normal dham or tanreen of dhamma on a letter. You have to then change the letter as well. So a vakf with a ta al marbuta turns into a ha sakin. Okay, so you would remove the dots completely you would remove the tanreen of dhamma completely and you would put a sukun on top of a ha. Okay, so let me recite it. You recite after me and I'll show you another example as well. So here we have Musfiratun. 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 Very nice. Try to make your mouth round when saying the ra with the fatah. Okay. Right, over here, we're now doing vakf, so it's musfira. 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 Good. So, as you can see, we've changed the sound completely. Now, sometimes, and I'm going to just go on to the exercise just to give you an example, <sighs> okay? Sometimes this ta'ama buta is like this over here, Okay. Sometimes it looks like this over here. Okay. Right? So, again, this will follow the same rule. So, for example, if we are saying this in continuation, we are saying, 
Na'imatun. Good. Try to make that ayin sound from your throat, okay? Na'imatun. Na'imatun. Excellent. So if we were doing a vak, we would ignore the two dots. We would ignore the tanveen of dhamma. And we will put a sukun on top of the ha. So it would be na'ima. Na'ima. Right, excellent. Again here, this is the same as the one that is in the example, which is this ta, ta here, ta mabuta here. Again, ghishawatun. Ghishawatun. Good. And if we were doing vak, it would be ghishawah. Excellent, good. So for that rule, it's something that everybody needs to be mindful of, that it actually changes the sound completely there. Okay, good, well done. Now let's go on to the next rule, number nine. Now in this one, we have um, a bar with the alif, you can see, but the bar has a tanveen of fata on top. Okay, now instead of having... Uh, pronouncing this as a tanveen of fata. If you are doing a vakf, you would pronounce it like an alif mother. Okay, like an alif mother. Right, a fata with an alif. Right. So, in normal continuation, it would be pronounced abwaban. Abwaban. Excellent. Now, if we are doing a vakf, this will be pronounced. Abawaba. Is it? Abawaba. No. Yep, that's okay. Abawaba. Good, excellent. So you would basically take off one of the fatas here, just leave one fata and pronounce it like an alif mother. Okay, so we're going to say it once more. Abawaba. Abwaban. Abwaba. Abwaba. Excellent. Good. Well done. So both rules eight and nine are slightly different to what we have been looking at before. We're not going to put a simple sukun on. For rule number eight, we have to remove the dots of the Dharma Buddha, remove the stroke, and put a sukun on top. And for rule number nine, for a tanveen of fata, which has an alif afterwards, okay, you would mm -hmm. remove one of the fatas and you would sit, replace it with one, just one fata, and it would be pronounced like an alif mother. Okay, so excellent. Did, did you understand everything okay? Yes. Excellent, good. Jazakamullah, thank you so much for your help. Jazakallah. Allah Hafiz. Okay, if we could have our next student, please. Yes, our next student is G1060. G1060. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you today? Mama? How are you today? I'm okay. Alhamdulillah, excellent. Are you understanding everything okay so far? G1060? Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum aslam. G one zero six zero. G. Yes. Are you understanding everything? Okay. Yes. Excellent. Good. So if you start with tawud and tasmiya, and then we'll go on with rule number ten. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good. Okay. So if you have a vertical, you can see here. It's up to my. There we go. Okay. If you have a vertical fatha, okay, followed by this uh, ya, you can see this ya here, right? Then you will elongate for two seconds. And if you are doing vakf, you will also elongate for two seconds. Okay. So you don't make a change in the sound here, right? So we have in this, yes, ah. Uh, yes, ah. Uh. Good. Once more with the iron sound from your throat. Yes, ah. Uh. Yes, ah. Uh. Good effort. Now move over here. It's exactly the same. So you're not going to make any change. Yes, ah. Uh. Yes, ah. Uh. 
Yes, ah. Yes, ah. Okay, so you need to really work on this ein sound. It's not easy for all of us to do. We have to feel it in your throat. So it should sound different from an alif sound. Ah, from your throat. Oh. Okay. Oh. So if you have a vertical fatha, it will be exactly the same sound. Okay, exactly the same sound. Right here, number 11. Now, if you have a vertical kasra, again, there will be no change. You will still pronounce it as a vertical kasra. So for example, here we have Yuh yi. Yuh yi. Good. And over here, yuh yi. Yuh yi. Good. So there's no change in that in both of those. Number 10 and number 11. You have to elongate with the fatha sound here and you elongate with the kasra sound here. Okay? Jazakumullah. Thank you so much for your help. Jazakumullah. Okay, right. So if we can move on to our next student, please. Yes, our next student is G1118. 1118. Assalamu G1118, can you hear me? Uh, should we move on to somebody else and try them again later? Yes. G one zero eight zero. G one. G one zero eight zero. Waalaikum assalam. How are you? Good. Are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. Are you understanding everything? Okay. Yes. Excellent. Good. Now I know there are lots of rules here, so even if we are understanding them, a lot of this will just come with practice. The more that you read, and you'll start to recognize how you need to do a vakf in particular places. Okay. So if we start with tawuz and tasmiyah, and we'll go on to the next rule. Excellent. So here we have a alif mother because the letter before has a fata on it, right? So again, there will be no change in the pronunciation. Okay, we will still pronounce the alif mother. Okay, so we have Rafana. Oh, you have a bit of an echo on your on your side. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Ra ra fa na. Ra fa na. Okay. And again, ra fa na. Ra fa na. Okay. And if you're doing a vak, no change. Okay. So if you said this word and you need to stop and take a break you will still pronounce it in exactly the same way. Rafana. 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 Okay, good. Now, next one. Here. If you have, um, again, you see a fata and then you see this ya here afterwards. Okay, now you would change this into a Vertical fatha, so you pronounce this for two seconds. Okay, so okay. first, the original way it will be pronounced is al ala, al ala, al ala, al ala. And if we are doing a vakf, if we have to make a pause after this word, we will say al ala, al ala. Good, al ala. Very good. Excellent. Well done. Jazakumullah. Thank you so much for your help. Jazakumullah. Okay. Let's move on to our next student, please. Yes. G1044. G1044. Okay. G1044. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum assalam. How are you? Good. Alhamdulillah, good. So if we start with Dawood and Tasmiya and then we'll start the next word. Asbalam and the Shaitan and Rajim. Bismillah, Hiraman and Rahim. Good, well done. Okay, so here, as you can see, we have a noon with a Shadda on top. Okay, now that's called a noon Gunna, if you remember. 
right? Now, if we are pronouncing in continuation, we will pronounce this nunguna. If you have to do a vakf here, what will happen? The dhamma here changes into a sukun, but it says that the shtid will still be manifested. So let me just listen to me carefully, and then you'll know what I mean. So you still have to hold on the nasal sound when you make a stop here. So if you're in continuation, you would say, Ya zunnu, ya zunnu. Yeah, Good. So you're holding and making a nasal sound for about two seconds. Yeah, zunnu. Yeah, Right. If you are going to make a stop here, you would say, yeah, zun. Yeah, you still hold and make the nasal sound. Okay. Yeah, zun. Good. We're yeah, going to do it once more. We're going to do it without the vuk and then with the vuk. Okay, so without the vuk, yazunu. Yazunu. Okay, so you're not to elongate here. It's just a simple dhamma, just one second. Okay, yazunu. Okay, and if you have a vuk, then you say yazunu. Yes. Good. Well done. Excellent. So you hold on that. Now here, just like above, we have the noon guna. Here we have a mim guna. Okay. Mim mushadad. Mim with the shadda on top is mim guna. Okay. Now in this case, we have a tanveen of fatah. Okay. So we will pronounce this like this. Musamman. Okay, so you have to hold on the meme and then you have to make the nasal sound for the tanveen as well. Okay, and if we have to do a vakf here, the tanveen of fata will turn into a vertical fata. So you have to elongate that for two seconds. Musamma. 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 Okay, so you really need to push on the meme and hold for two seconds. Musamma. Musunna. It's a meme. Musamma. Musamna. Just keep practicing those. Keep practicing the sound. This is a meme. So you have to make a meme nasal sound. This is a noon. So you have to make a noon nasal sound. Okay. Excellent. Jazakumullah. Thank you for your help. Allah Hafiz. Okay. So like I just mentioned, when you have a noon with a tashdeed or a meme with a tashdeed, you have to manifest the tashdeed sound even if you are doing a vakf. Okay, even if you're doing a vakf, you have to make sure that you push on that meme or that noon and you make the guna sound. Okay, now, uh, next person, please, next student. One, G1087. G1087. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. Jazakumullah for asking. So if we start with Dawood and Tasmiya and then we'll move on. A'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Lovely. So here, now, it says here, so we can read it here. If we have a tanween on a long ta, so this is called a long ta, we saw the ta buta earlier, which was the ha with the two dots, this is a long ta, this will change into a sukun. Okay, the tanween here will change into a sukun. Right, so we're going to recite it first in continuation and then in how we would do it if we were going to do a vakf after this word. So we would pronounce this. Ma'adudatin. Very nice. Once more. Ma'adudatin. Very good. Well done. 
Now we will pronounce it in vowels. Ma'adudat. Ma'adudat. Very good. Once more. Ma'adudat. Ma'adudat. Very nice. Excellent. Well done. Good. Now, next rule. Rule number 17. I know I'm working through these rules very quickly, but don't worry, we will get time to practice tomorrow as well. And again, this, like I said before, this is something that will just come with practice. As long as you all have these rules, basic knowledge of these rules, you keep practicing them. When you start reading the Quran, it will make a lot more sense and you'll know exactly how to make your stops. Okay, so next rule, rule number 17. Here we have a Hamza with a Tanveen on top. Okay, with a Tanveen of Fatah. Now, if you have a Hamza with a Tanveen of Fata, you will convert that Tanveen of Fata into a vertical Fata. So that means you will elongate for two seconds. Okay, so let's do this one. Nisa an. Nisa an. Nisa an. Nisa. Very nice. Now, I want you to make sure that each of your letters is said separately. So ni is separate, sa is separate, and an is separate. We're not joining any of them. Okay, so once more. Ni, sa, an. Ni, sa, an. Okay, so when I'm listening, because I think your voice is, um, is going a little bit quiet, it sounds like you're saying nisa, but you need to say the ni separately. Okay, try once more. Nisa. Right, much better. Good, well done. Now we're going to do it in vakf. So if we were doing it in vakf, we would say Nisa. Nisa. Good, once more. Nisa. Nisa. Very good, excellent. Now, although it's saying Hamza here, okay, you can see the Hamza here. If we were to look at another um, example from this page, okay, so here, again, we have a Hamza, okay, and this is the same word that we've just looked at, Nisa, an, right? Now, the same rule applies if there is an Alif with a Fata, with a Fata, um, Fatatain on top, okay, with a tanveen of fata. It's the same rule. So in this case, we would have rida an. Rida an. Good. And if we were doing a vakf here, it would be rida a. Rida a. Good. Excellent. So it's the same principle because the hamza and the alif you have the same rule that applies to both, okay? Tanveen of fata, tanveen of fata, if you are stopping on that word and making a pause and the tanveen of fata is on top of a hamza or on top of an alif, you have to elongate that like you would a vertical fata, okay, for two seconds, right? Like here, okay? Good, well done, excellent. Now, next one, rule number 18. Now here we have a tanveen of kasra, but also if this was a tanveen of dhamma, then it would be the same rule. Okay, a tanveen of kasra or tanveen of dhamma on a hamza or on an alif, like I just explained to you, it's the same rule for hamza and alif, would turn into a sukun. Right? It would turn into a sukun. So in this example, we have ma. In. Ma in good well done now if you remember when we have a sukun on a hamza or an alif we need to make a soft jerk at the end okay so when we are doing a vakf here we will say ma Good, well done, excellent. Once more. Ma. Ma. 
Very good. Excellent. Thank you so much, G1087. Really nice recitation. Well done. Um, can my Hello. sorry, yes. Can my sister talk on the mic? Uh, is she in the class? Yeah. Yeah. What number is she? We have to ask the discipline in charge. G1088. Uh, discipline in charge, is that okay with you? Um, yes. Okay. G1088. Assalamualaikum. One zero eight eight. Can you hear me? Um, G one zero eight eight. Can you hear me? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you? Can you hear me? G one zero eight eight. Is your mic working? I think there's something wrong with the mic. Is that 1087? Yeah. Uh, could she share your mic? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. Assalamualaikum. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Excellent. So if we start with Dawood and Tasmiya and then we'll go on to our next rule. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ Very good effort. Well done. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ Now, here we have we have a ya with a shadda on on top. Okay, ya mashadda. Okay, and also has a dhamma on the top, the stroke of dhamma. Okay, now this will be changed into the stroke of a sukun, the sign of a sukun. Okay, but we will also make a tashdeed sound. Now, when I recite, then you'll be able to hear how I'm reciting. So we need to make a ya sound at the end, very, very lightly. Okay, so first we're going to say it in continuation, and then we will say it in rough. Okay. Anabiju. Anabiju. Very good. Once more. Anabiju. Anabiju. Very good. Now we're going to do it in vakf. Okay. Anabiju. 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 Good. So you really need to hear that ya sound. Very lightly, but you still need to hear it. Okay, so again, it's one of those things that we really need to practice because it's not an easy uh, ending. You need to be very conscious that you need to make the ya sound there. Okay, good, well done. Now, here, we have a ya mutaharik, a ya with a stroke. In this case, the ya has a fata on top. Okay, this will be changed into a sukun, into a sukun, but it will not be a letter of lean. Right, so let me just recite this so that you know how it's pronounced. So if we are doing it in continuation, this would be Maswaya. Maswaya. Good, once more. Maswaya. Maswaya. Very nice, excellent. Now we are going to do it in Vakf. Okay, so listen carefully. Maswai. Good. Maswai. Maswai. Okay, so we need to make the alif sound because this is an alif mother with the wow. We need to make that first and then add the ya at the end. Maswai. Maswai. Okay, so what we need to do here, this is for everyone, because you have a, a wow with an alif mother, we need to make sure that we elongate that and then we add the ya at the end. Okay, so that's when we're practicing, just be really conscious that we're doing alif mother sound and then adding the ya at the end. Okay, Jazakamullah, thank you so much for your help. Um, G one zero eight eight. Allah Hafiz. Okay, if we can have our next student, please. Yes, our next student is G one zero one nine. G one zero one nine. 
Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. G1019, how are you today? I'm fine, how are you? I'm very well, alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah for asking. So, lots and lots of new work for us today. Are you understanding everything okay? Yeah. Excellent, good. So if we start with Dawood and Tasmiya and then we'll carry on with the next rules. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good, well done. So, if we have a tanveen of fatha, as you can see here, tanveen of fatha. Now, we are not going to pronounce this ya because there's no stroke on this ya. Okay, so just focus on the tanveen. We've got a tanveen of fatha that changes into a vertical fatha, which means we elongate this wow for two seconds. Okay, so in continuation, I'll read it first and then I will recite in vak. Okay. So once I've recited the continuation, you recite after me. Two, one. Two, one. Two, one. Two, one. Good, nasal sound. Now, here it would be. Two, one. Two, one. Two, one. Two, one. Very good. So if you have a tanvina fata, the last letter, tanvina fata, you are going to change that into a vertical fata. Right? Now, next rule, rule number 22. There are certain times where no change will take place if the last letter of a word is a sakin. So if you already have a sukun on the end of a word, okay, you will not make any change. Okay, you will just recite it as it is. Right. If the last letter of a word is a mada or a letter of lean, also, for example, here, you will not make any change. Okay, so it will be exactly the same. Okay, so let's do this one first. Gafaru. 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 And over here, again, it's exactly the same. Gafaru. 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 Good, well done. Now here, next word. Banaha. Banaha. Good, well done. Once more. Banaha. Banaha. Okay, make sure each of those is two seconds, okay? Now over here, we're doing the vakf, but it stays the same. Banaha. Banaha. Once more, banaha. Banaha. Very good, excellent, well done. Jazakumullah, thank you so much for your help, uh, G1019. Allah Hafiz. Okay, if we could have another student, please. Yes, G1047. G1047. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. G1047, how are you? I'm, I already had a turn. Oh, you've already had a turn? G1047, are you? I already had a turn. Today? Yes. Okay. Um, if we could have another student then. Thank you so much for your honesty. Okay. Um, G1081. G1081. Assalamu alaikum G1081. G1081, can you hear me? Wa alaikum assalam. How are you? I'm very well, alhamdulillah, jazakumullah for asking. I can't hear you very clearly. Could you maybe come a little bit closer to your microphone? Jazakumullah. Okay, so we're going to go over some of these words in this last line. Um, we are going to recite them normally and we are going to recite them in vakf. Uh, the thing about this last line is there will be no change whether we recite them normally or in vakf. But again, we do have to practice how we would make a stop. Okay, so all of these letters in this last line, all of these words in this last line, there's no change whether you're reciting in continuation or you are making a stop here. 
Okay, so if we start with Dawood and Tasmiya. Excellent. So we're going to recite this first one normally and then we will recite it in Ba'af. So this would be Was Guru. Was Guru. Remember, this is a Dal. Okay, once more. Was Guru. Was Guru. Now we're going to recite it in Vakf. Was Guru. Was Guru. Okay, make sure again, two seconds here because of the Rao Madha. Was Guru. Was Guru. Next word. Rabbi. Rabbi. And in Vakf, Rabbi. Rabbi. Okay, next word. First normally, then in Vakf. Sabili. Okay, nice deep breath so that you can elongate for two, two seconds here. Two seconds here, two seconds here. Sabili. Good. Once more, take a nice deep breath in. Sabili. Okay, and if we were doing in Vakf, it would be exactly the same. Sabili. Sabili. Very good, well done. Okay, so just remember that when we've got our letters where we need to elongate, for example, our wa madha or a ya madha, we need to make sure we elongate for two seconds there, each one. Okay? Yes. Jazakumullah, thank you so much for your help. Can Let we have another student, please? Me. Sorry, were you asking a question? No, as I said, thank you for calling me. Sorry? Uh, he just said, uh, thank you for calling. Oh, okay. Um, G1033. G1033. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. Jazakumullah for asking. Are you understanding everything okay? Yes, and thank okay. you for choosing me. Oh, you're very welcome. Discipline in charge, thank you so much for choosing G1033. Jazakumullah. Okay, so if we start with Dawood and Tasmiya, and then we'll carry on from this word here. So we start Dawood. with Dawood. Yep. Billahi min rajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. Okay, so first time we're going to read it without Vakf, although it's the same. We need to know, are we doing a vakf or are we not? So we're not in the first time and we are in the second time. So this would be Jallaha. 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 Good. And now in vakf, Jallaha. Jallaha. Good. Excellent. Exactly the same. Well done. So next one. First without vakf. La ta'atho. La ta'atho. Okay. Ta. You have to make the an sound. La ta'atho. La ta'atho. Good. Very good effort. So now in vakf. La ta'atho. La ta'atho. Good. Well done. Next one. Kutilat. Kutilat. Good. And now in Vakf. Kutilat. Kutilat. Very good. And last one here. Uzlifat. Uzlifat. Now in Vakf. Uzlifat. Uzlifat. Excellent. Jazakumullah. G1033. Really lovely recitation. Well done. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Okay, excellent. So, mashallah, we've got through all of the rules that we needed to today. We've got through 20 through 22 rules. There's quite a lot of rules here, okay? Quite a lot of rules to think about. Some of them are the same, so you don't need to worry too much. Some of them are slightly different, and you do need to think about them a bit more. 
a lot of the basic ones you are just putting a spoon on the end. So, for example, if there's a fata, a kasra, a dhamma, a tanveen of kasra, tanveen of dhamma, okay, a vertical, um, vertical kasra or a vertical dhamma, inverted dhamma, sorry, or most letters, they will remain that you will just, they were all the same rule in the sense that you just put a sukun on the end of each one. Okay, there are some differences. For example, if you have a ta'al marbuta, you would change that to a ha sakin. Okay, and I showed you the two different forms of ta'al marbuta that we can, may see the way that it's written. Okay, so you need to think about the, diff the rules which are going to be slightly different as well. Okay, and it will all come with practice. This is not something that we would just um, be able to learn immediately. We just have to keep practicing this. Okay, so your homework for today will be those first eight rows, which we went through up to Tharma Bhutta. You need to read how you would read it in continuation, just like we were doing today, followed by how you would read it when you pause in Vakf, just like we did today. Okay, so those first eight rules, the ones that I just went over, the majority of them, you are just changing the last stroke into a sukun. Okay, as you can see, it is just this one, which is slightly different. It still turns into a sukun, but you just have to recognize that the ta and mabuta, the two dots on top of the ha, okay, they will need to be uh, got rid of. You will ignore those. You will take off the, dham, the dhammatain as well. Okay, and you would change it into a sukun to do a vakf. Okay, ta arma buta changes into a ha sakin. And remember when you are pronouncing that, you have to pronounce the ha sound. So, for example, here we have musfiratun. But if you are doing vakf, it would be musfirah. Musfirah. Okay, so you do need to be careful to make that ha sound. Okay, excellent. So if we could have our, um, we've shown you the homework, so you know what you need to do. You need to practice those eight rows. If we could have our final student, please, for our final dua. Yes, G1102. Assalamu alaikum, G1102. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. How are you? I'm fine. Alhamdulillah, good. Did you understand everything okay today? Yes. Excellent, good. So lots and lots of practice for that then, inshallah. So we're going to do our final dua, and we're going to start with Dawood and Tasmiya, and then we're going to recite the dua, okay? A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah <laughs> Bil Quran al Azim. Allahumma hamni bil Quran al Azim. Very good effort. Can we read the translation, please? Oh Allah, have mercy on me through the Quran the Great. Jazakumullah. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you to all the students today for participating, those who are on the mic and those that were listening patiently at home. Inshallah, we will see you all again tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.